Welcome back to Truth Be Told. My name is AJ. I'm your host. Today I've got with me one of the youngest, hottest, best looking DJs slash producers in Australia right now. Discretion has over 75 million streams on YouTube alone, 300,000 subscribers, a, com a combination of about 100,000 followers all over. Man, welcome. Thank you, AJ. Thanks Discretion. Thank you. Mate, Western Sydney's finest. Um, well, firstly, let's start off. Where'd you grow up, man? Born and raised in Blacktown. Yep. Still here. Western Sydney. Western Sydney is where it's at. Uh, grateful to grow up in such an area where I finally get to see the music scene pop off a lot. Um, I feel like my area has really, uh, you know, played a massive part in my career as well. It's obviously where I started off with, uh, everything, I guess. And um, it's good to see that it's uh, all growing together. It's still in the area, but going worldwide now too. Yeah. What was it like growing up in Western Sydney? Beautiful, beautiful. Good childhood. No, for me, no drama. You know, everyone. You know, everyone's real. It's I. I honestly couldn't have asked for much better. See, you know, you know the thing I like about you. You, you know what I noticed about you, and what I actually want to touch up on. Most people know Western Sydney, and most people, most people know the, the drill scene, they know the Australian music scene, hip-hop scene, where pretty much everyone's lyrics, you know, is, I'm getting going to stab this person, I'm going to shoot this person, I'm going to fucking do this person over. Yeah. We're in the car, we've got one loaded, we've got this, we've got that. You don't, you're, not that, you're not like that at all. Like, for, yeah. for someone that's grown up in pretty much the trenches, you're very, like, it's just you. You're, yeah. not, like, you're not about that life. What made you go the way that you think you went and weren't influenced by that but still kind of involved in it if that makes sense yeah yeah no you're right um you know more i feel like my parents probably made that i wouldn't say big change because I, I i feel like i've always been like that they had a heavy influence on that um you know i i didn't feel the need i never felt the need to be a part of all that drama because I didn't have a reason to be in the first place. So there's no point of sticking into that drama. Um, you know, I know a lot of people that are, that are involved in that drama. Some of my closest friends, you know, you walk to the local shopping centre and it's just it's just in front of you. But I think I don't have a reason to be part of that. So why why stick my head there? It's not it's not my business. Um, I've never been a real fan of you know violence and. And all that stuff. You're too nice for violence. I can't, I can't, I can't <laughs> picture you going, motherfucker, come outside, let's go. It's, nah. it's, not your, it's not your thing. Not really. I, li I like, you know, I get along with everybody. I get along with people that, you know, two different people that don't get along. It's just, um, I don't let my area define me, but I let it, you know, it, it's still it's still a part of me, but it doesn't define me. Do you ever feel pressure from that? Because I know that, yeah. like, you know, you, you got like two friends, yeah? You got me on one end, and then you got... The other version of me on the other end. Yeah. And both are like, why the fuck are you talking to that? Why, why is he talking to you? Why are you doing this? Do you feel that ever like has an impact on you? Not exactly they that. They respect you. I feel like it's more, it's not even the fact that I, you know, I, I get along with one side and the other side. It's it's not even, it's not, it's not really that. They, usually those people don't have a problem with it. My friends and everything. It's more the outside people that like to assume that, you know. Oh, you're talking about all those gronks on Instagram and yeah, yeah, yeah. all the comments? Yeah, yeah. Shocked. Like they definitely have things to do with their lives. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that's it's that's that's usually it. It's um it's never really the people inside of it. It's usually those it's usually those um just watching and judging from afar. Now, I know we started with growing up, but fuck, we're just on the topic. So with beef in the music scene, yeah. I know I said we, we wouldn't touch on it, but I just got one question. Oh, cool. Do you find it's competitive? Do you think that you know, you got you got all the diff you got all the different sides. Do you feel like they fuel each other? Yeah, yeah. Because I, I, the thing I notice about it is they all seem to drop around the same time. Yeah, yeah. See, I like I've said this a few times as well. Um, I, so I personally don't um I don't support the beef. Um, you love you the know? creativity that comes from. Yeah, yeah. So I I feel like I on in all honesty I do feel like without the beef this music scene wouldn't be as popular. But if that beef sticks around, you know. For, uh, longer than it should then it's going to also be the reason that um it dies off too and i feel like it's it's going to get to a, it's going to get to that point um 
I don't know if it's nearby or not, but it will it will get to that point where the beef kills it. Do you think people can put their egos aside? Because you see a lot of you see a lot of people, like past music beefs. You see, well, I mean, you got Fifty Cent and Ja Rule still going at it, <laughs> but you got like people like Nas, mm. Jay Z made up um, UK scene. You got Bugsy Malone and Chip who pretty much that beef there put their put their music like they were dropping non-stop, non-stop. Mm. Recently, Stormzy and Wiley. Do you feel like with the young? Because I've met a lot of them, like with the young egos, the young thing, they're able to actually be like, fuck, you know what, it's it's bigger than this. Yeah. Or do you reckon, you know what, if they've got too many influential people around them, just it's ingrained in them? Uh, I guess it's just down to, um, you know, each individual. You know, I, 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 know, I know some people that would prefer that there's no beef as well. Um... I don't, I, I, I don't see why, why um, there's no possibility for them to drop their egos and, and you know, come together, at some point, but at the same time, it just like you said, you know, if they're around, heavy influence, then that that's that also plays a big part in, in um, what they're like. But, I feel like there's a there's that opportunity for them to at some point get together and, at least you know, mend it in some way. Even if it's not, even even if it's just a mutual term, just don't mm -hmm. associate. You imagine it just goes dead and then bang. You just got a track with JM's lips and hips on it. I love that, man. Uh -huh. I love that. Well, I actually wanted my, um, I actually wanted my next track to be, like, ideally, what would have been an amazing Speak track. Truth. Speak your truth. I, I, ideally, it w I would have loved uh, HP on it and JM's on it. Oh, JM's on it. JM's, like, on the track with... HP on it. Do they got do they got issues? Or no. I thought no, they're cool. HP and well, JM. Yeah. yeah, I think they are. They, they they tour together. Yeah. That'd be a good track. Yeah, that'd be amazing. That'd but be you know, they everyone's busy. Um, HP has their project going, and I noticed One Four's got their um, their collab with uh, ASAP Ferg, which is huge. That's huge. So that's a that's a big that's a big step off for the scene. That is humongous, man. That is like crazy. And I, I I know that there's gonna be more of that, through, like for for everybody, um, but that's that's crazy. Yeah, that was gonna be one of my later questions. But fuck, since we're here now, yeah. Who would you want to jump on the? Who would you? Who would your ultimate dream collab be in the world? Non Australian. Oh, let's stay away from world. Australian, so oh. we don't offend anyone. But if we go oh. global, give me two. Actually, give me three artists you'd love to work with, and three producers, because producers, I reckon, are the new artists. Yeah. So, what do you want to start with? Producers? We'll go producers yeah, first. You're a producer, we'll, you're go, a producer. we'll go producers first. So, I'd love Pharrell. <laughs> DJ Khaled. He's like 50 producers in one. Have you not heard my ad libs? I'm fucking pretty much like you. <laughs> We're the motherfucking best! <laughs> Is that too loud for the camera? <laughs> <laughs> Who is that? DJ Khaled. And, um, it's hard to say three because I know I have like 50. Um, because in your head, you know you're going to work with them later on, so... Nah. Like, what the fuck did you... Um... Do you know what comes to my head? Um... Jetson. No. Oh, Lord, Jetson made another one. Does the baby... Some of the baby stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know why. He just comes to my head straight away. You, you know who I love at the moment? Axel. Oh, yeah. Mm. But him in the, the whole drill scene yeah. in America right now... Man, he's, he he made um, uh, Fivio Foreign's Weddy. Oh. And Kevin Gates did a remix to it. Yeah. And I just, I'm in the car like this. <laughs> it's funny because I'm a very spiritual person. So I'm in the car just bumping. I'm going to fucking shoot you in the motherfucking face. You're going to get it. You're going to get it. And then I, then I step out and I sage. I say my like my affirmations and stuff like that. It's, it's very spiritual. <laughs> but um, what made you get into DJing? Um, I know I know one of you. Like, who's your influences that made you get into DJing? How old were you when you actually started? So... I always have this um, little argument with my mum. She thinks I exaggerate, but then it's like, depending on the question, I, st I first started practicing, like the first time I ever picked up, you know, a little mixer and started practicing, I was nine years old. Fuck. So I was nine in this very house. So 10 years ago? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was turning 10, so about 10 years ago, yeah. Um, it's when I started practicing or just doing it for like a little bit of fun. And then I had my first... Uh, gig at a birth at an 18th birthday when I was 11. 
I don't under- 11, 11, 11 years old, first gig. I don't understand how weird it is until I put it in perspective when I was eight. Oh, I'm 19, but like, for example, I walk in, if I walk into an 18th and I see an 11 year old there, I'd be weirded out. But at the time, I didn't think much of it. But just so we got this on record, when he's doing $100,000 gigs in America, he was on the show first. Fuck everyone else. <laughs> Fuck everyone else. I had him first. Shocked that he's going to have to wire me a couple bit of $100,000 more. <laughs> 11 years old, man. Yeah. That's like, that's it. You knew that was your thing. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's funny how it came across it though. It was so random. Like it wasn't, like my dad had DJed for like my mum's family's events back when, uh, you know, back when they were younger, but he, he wouldn't consider himself a DJ. He just did it for my mum's family. And I'm not, I can't remember if, you know, that has anything to really do with the fact that I did because I just, I got interested in it because I found a little mixer in the shed and just started yeah, doing you're it. You're yeah. a young kid, you're intuitive, yeah, you're yeah. Like, oh, what's this? Yeah, exactly. And you start doing sounds and shit, like, oh, wow. Yeah. And all of a sudden you just produce for one of the biggest stars in the world. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, um, that's pretty much how I came about it. Where'd you get the name discretion? Because I've always... Mind you, I can't spell it properly. I always have... No me, one can. Me and DJ, always have arguments. I get, I get different names all the time. DJ Direction, DJ Disinfection. I was about, I was about to say another one, but it's just very inappropriate, but it's all right. Yeah, I, could, I knew where that was going. <laughs> 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 the... Get your money at the gutter. Where, where, <laughs> where, where, where... So, 11 years old, mm-hmm. and when did you start... When would you, would you say you started really... Getting into it heavily. When did probably you... when I was getting into high school. Probably that you know that gap from going from primary school to high school. You know, um, I remember getting into school, and all the teachers when they asked what we do, I would say that I was like I DJed, and they all thought I was doing it for fun. Little did they know I was actually doing birthday gigs and stuff. Like I was just, I was actually DJing at that point. So I would say around then because that's when I was not, I wouldn't say regularly getting gigs, but I had a few throughout the year. Um, but I didn't start getting popular until about, tw- you know, 2015 maybe. So when, is that when you, so, cause you're, you got majority of your following on YouTube. When, when yeah. did you, rele- when did you release your first, when did you make your first, uh, when, first when did you make your first mix? And then when did you make your first mix for YouTube? So first mix would have been, I have a mix on SoundCloud that, I privatized so no one can see it right now except for me. Um, Maybe you shot a similar thing. What is it? Tw- oh, like 2011 hits or something? So it's like, what well, the hits from 2011? So I was. What, in, you, what hits were in 2011? What year was I in? No, what hits were in 2011? I'm trying to think what, what songs. Was, or was it 2012? Oh, I can't remember. Was that Take Care? I think that was Take Care. Drake? Maybe it was 2013. I can't remember. No, 20, sorry, it was 2013 hits because it was, a, it was um, uh, what's that song? Rude, Magic. Why you gotta be so rude? <laughs> and and uh, you know what I mixed that with? Nay nay. <laughs> <clears throat> that's me, yeah, that's what I mixed it with. And then so that was like one of the first ones I did. Um, and that was on SoundCloud. Yeah, so put up position. Again. That was on that was on SoundCloud. And then the first one I did for YouTube, I actually posted it on Facebook first, and that's where I got my whole. Um, my first bunch of attention. It was the J. Cole No Role Models. No, not no, Wet Dreams. And I had Tupac on it. It was my, f- if you go to my YouTube, I'm pretty sure that's the very first one I have, isn't um, Wet Dreams. Yeah, and for your first YouTube video, 450,000 views. Yeah, and then I, I, I thought it was such a big thing because it took me like, it took, on Facebook, for me it was big. In a month, I got 50,000 views. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. I dropped another one after that. It flopped. I can't remember that. I think that was... Um, um, Cut It by OT Genesis. Cut It. Yeah, Cut I remixed that Cut with... It. I don't know, it was pretty out of it. It was Beyonce's Formation. Or something like, yeah, something like that. And then that flopped. So I was like, oh, wow. Why didn't this get as much attention as before? When how'd, I... you, how'd you deal with that? Being like still young... Did you feel rejected? No. I just felt like... Because for that, I tried... Like, I think... And maybe... I think it was a learning curve. It was like... Because I put so much effort into that one. Trying to work... Like, trying to... 
be as good as the first one. So I worked a lot harder. I actually had a, like um, I did a video clip for it, like just chopped up from OT Genesis video and Beyonce and like I I made a video clip to it. I tried so much so much harder with the with the cover that was very in your face. And then it just flopped, and I was like, "Oh, maybe I maybe I tried too hard. Maybe I was just trying to get people's attention, and that's the reason I didn't get attention because I was doing it for the attention." And then, for the for you to come up with that assumption at that age, man, <laughs> I don't I don't think I don't think people realize, especially with create with creative flow, the more it's the law of the like the law of the universe. Mm. I start talking like bomb ready. It's the law of the universe. The more you try to push, the more it's going to pull away from you. Yeah. And you're, you're right. Like that, that in itself, you know, it's the perfect example. Yeah. And the thing that you, you went back and you learned. Yeah. And then the next one. So I was still, I was still phased and, you know, amazed by the fact that I got 50,000 views in a month or like two months or something after that J. Cole um, remix. And did then... Did the booking price go up? No, not See, by then. I would have like it would have gone not for me then. the Brookie Pass would have gone to five grand just then. Mm. <laughs> one hour gig. <laughs> Actually for me, one hour walkthrough. Five fifty thousand listen, I just got fifty thousand on YouTube. Ten thousand uh. walkthroughs, brother. Let's see. <laughs> I was I, w- I was actually like because I was in a school I remember posting that during a school holiday, coming to school thinking, you know, maybe people saw it. And I had a few people got coming up to me like, Oh yeah, I saw your remix because it was the first remix that people had actually really heard. Because I was like, oh, wow, look, it's got like around a 1,000 shares, 50,000 views. So I was like, that's cool. And then I remember one night after a gig, um, I posted a remix I had in the bank for like a few months. And it was Bryson Tiller's Don't Ooh. with Tupac. I posted it and usually, not usually, it was after this that I actually started um, having scheduled times to post it. But this, I posted it at like 12, like like midnight. And I woke up to like 300,000 views and like 7,000 shares. And I was like, I just got like in nine hours, I got a lot more than I did in a, in two months with my first one. How are you feeling? I was crazy. Bryson Tiller shared it on his, uh, on his Facebook. And then that video got taken down. I was, I was spewing, but that was like, it, was, it wasn't too after that. It, it reached like a million views on... A million views and like seven hundred thousand shares or something. No, it's not seven hundred. Like seventy thousand shares. No, more than that actually. It was around a hundred thousand shares. I was because it was yeah, hundred thousand shares. I was like, whoa. Just for the camera, can we guarantee we're going to get that amount of shares for this interview? Hundred thousand shares. <laughs> <laughs> right now. Hey, wow. So, how if you, you would have been? I was cheering. I was like, no one's done this, like, at that point. Well, I wasn't thinking that at that point. I was, oh, that was something I thought about after. I was just amazed by the, you know, the numbers on it. Right. That's yeah. like, fuck. You, set, like, to, to mention 70,000 people sharing, like, I, th- I think shares is actually bigger than yeah, yeah. actual views itself. Yeah, shares no, is, Like, if, if you think about it, like, Majority of people have a thousand followers and uh, uh, sorry, a thousand friends and shit like that. Yeah. If you think of the amount of shit like that's, and also it's it's more effort to actually go share something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Than it is to go view something or like something. Mm. What was the next one? Like, was that for you? Was that your pinnacle moment where you're like, okay, we're we we got we're onto something here. Yeah. To be honest, the first one was actually when I was like, oh, like I've I've started something. Like I've started doing. Because I remember all my mixes were live before that. Like, it was me um, on the turntables doing it. And then the J. Cole one was the first one where I actually got into um, FL Studio and, you know, took my time with it and put it all together. And I was like, oh, wow, like, I'm going to start doing that now, you know. And then, yeah, when the Bryce Tiller one dropped, I was like, yeah, let's keep doing this. Let's keep going. Like, if it's getting that, like, that amount of um, numbers. And then... I had another remix after that. It was um, "Needed Me" Rihanna, and I put J Cole on it, and that went that went up quicker than the Bryson Tiller one. How quick? Like seven hundred thousand, seven hundred thousand views in like less than twelve hours. Where the other one was like around 
like in like nine hours, it was like 300,000. So maybe about almost 400,000 in 12 hours. And then I went to 700,000 in 12 hours for my needed, for the needed me. But that one got taken off Facebook quicker than, than the other ones. Because Facebook took the, all, the, all my videos down and then took my page down. So my page I have on Facebook now is my second page. Fuck. So how many, pa how many people did you have on the first one? 20,000. And now, now... How long ago was that? That was back in 2016. Going into 2017. Because it was, it was like January 2nd or something that happened. January 3rd. That it happened. It was like the beginning of the year. I was like, wow, what a way to start the year. My Facebook page got deleted. Because I, I also had a, um, a festival coming up and they didn't know how to contact me because my Facebook page was gone. Which festival? It was, a, it was like an under 18 one. Uh, summer, summer, summer break? Oh, nice. Yeah. How many, did you perform there? Did you end up performing? I was on the, I was on the outside. I was outside. I wasn't on the main stage. But? I, pre I prepped so hard for that as well. Yeah. And I got there and it was a table. I was like, oh, that's me. <laughs> That's where I am. <laughs> you fucking 20 fans there. Yeah, because I was watching DJ Noise on the main stage and I was like, God, this is mad. I wish I was on this stage. Ten minutes later, I was like, oh, it's almost my time. I'm going to walk outside and it's like a little courtyard. But, you know, you work your way up. And where have you worked your way up? Because we're going to get into that. But uh, who did you, who'd you um, support oh, recently? <laughs> uh, I supported Tiger at his concert. How many people? Too many, man. Way too many of them. So you went from being on the outskirts of under 18s four years ago to supporting Tiger last year. Last year. Three years. Three years. Progression. Yeah. After you posted one video that went viral, the second one flopped. Now, most people at that age too would be like, oh, fuck, I give up. There's no mm. point. My thing's over. Mm. Then you posted another one after that, blew up. Mm. Bryson Tiller himself shared yeah. it. Yeah. And then. You did a Rihanna one, which doubled the numbers. Yeah. Right. <laughs> now, what happened next? What's next? After. When did you get into clubs? When did I get in clubs? Where was your first club gig? My first club gig was in Melbourne at um, Mad City. Um, I think they changed the name now. I'm not sure what it is. Now, that wasn't that very, very successful nightclub we went to when I was there too. It and wasn't? Was that, was that? No, that wasn't it. No, not that one, not that one. That was a very, where we stayed in the six-star resort. This guy's sad. <laughs> hey, if, if you saw this hotel that they had them in, I didn't stay with them. I was in the Intercontinental. But if you saw, I felt bad for them. They they had, mate, let's, there's just cockroaches everywhere. There's this, mate, just. And I only got like an hour of sleep because I was babysitting. I was babysitting Sauce that week. <laughs> Sauce was very respectful. Oh my God. He's a funny dude, man. Um, no, Mad City. That was in, that was in Colleton. In Melbourne. What was that like? Being, being fl they flew you out? Yep. What was that like? What, what was the feeling of that? How old were you? Like, were you 18? No. Nah. Very legitimate um, nightclub. I was 16. <laughs> and that was an 18 plus event? It was a nightclub. What was that like? Was that it was like MVP. That's the, that's the, that's the scene it was. <sighs> what a scene. I'm definitely fitting. <laughs> what was it like? Amazing, man. Mad feeling. That was crazy. I was on three hours. I was, I was main set. I was headlining. My, any... my first ever club gig and I was headlining. And... Now, you went with a girlfriend at the time, so I can ask. Did you get any numbers? I had a girlfriend at the time. You're a scumbag. I don't no, care. I'm sorry, I'm I, don't care. I, don't, I don't care about numbers. <laughs> nah. What, what, what was it like getting crazy attention like that? Because that, that's... It a... was... It was... Um, I feel like that was a... That was a moment where I was like, wow, like, this is... I'm, I'm interstate and people are, like... People know who I am. You know? Um... Like, people were coming to this nightclub for me, or well, majority of them anyway. And um, I was 16. Fl like, they flew me down to Melbourne. I stayed the night. I took my dad with me as well. And that's where I met, um, that's where I met DJ Rock with it as well. So that was cool, because I used to, you know, when I was younger, listening to his mixes as well. It was crazy. I was like, oh, this is DJ Rock with it. And he's saying, I got a video on my phone of him saying, um, you know, next best thing. And that was a crazy moment for me. I was like, wow, this guy's saying it to me. That made you go harder? Yeah. Yeah, it did. <laughs> it was like around, like, I think I'll, yeah, it was like 2017 that happened. So I was 16 turning 17. Yeah. Because I was born in 2000. When did I meet you? August. 2019 I met you. 
When was your first gig at MVP? Mm, 2018, you met me. That was your first gig? This was yeah. on your 18th birthday. Yeah, I DJed. No, you did. Yeah, you met me after that, yeah. Yeah. Because that's when I met Key as well. I met Key a week after my birthday what at was, MVP, my first, my first MVP gig. What was that like, DJing for your first gig in Sydney at 18? That wasn't my first gig at 18. No, fuck. Oh, at 18. What was it? Yeah, no, at 18, 18 years old. Yeah, yeah. When you're actually, all right, I'm actually allowed to be in the club. I can go get drinks. I can go get... I don't drink. <laughs> See? Sometimes you got to sacrifice to me. <laughs> actually, you know what? When I, when I first started working for Key, I didn't drink either. Mm. I banned myself for one year. I, I held up like a soldier too. Last time I had soft drink, I was 15 years old. Just wanted to point that out there. Yeah, we're going to... Tell the kids that. Actually, tell my little brother that because he doesn't fucking listen. It's 15. Just stop drinking soft drink. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. I, I no, actually... no, 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 no. <laughs> no stop, kidding. stop drinking soft drink so you can become an international DJ. I'll be your manager. I'll just take 25%. We're good. Um, <laughs> are you always trying to make money. Um, so you don't drink at all? Oh, yeah. Only at, um, only at home with my family. Um, every now and then. And my girlfriend. Just that's, um, that's the only time I drink. Is that, that's a choice, yeah? That's not just, yeah, yeah. You're just not into drinking? Nah. I Even even then, like, I still get hesitant. I'm like, hmm. Like, maybe. That's good, man, because, you know, every, everyone's got their vices. Yeah. You know, I, th- I think, and especially when you're, when you're in the, when you're in the scene and all that stuff, um, you know, people get into drinking. I've like, run a nightclub for quite a few years, so, like, you see it. You see people drink, drugs, um, women, like, the fact that you're not, the fact that you, you know what, the fact that you're not phased by the things that other people, the, the vices, sorry, that other people look up to, that shows a lot about your character. You know, like a lot, a lot of people your age would be like, drinking, drugs, I was going to say bitches, but you know, we're going to be gentlemen. Women. You already said it. <laughs> wim, women. Well, this is truth be told. I don't hold back. <laughs> women, um, you know, the streets. No, no work ethic, doing fuck all. So like the fact, the fact that you know you can actually sit there and say I don't drink, I don't do this, I don't do that. You feel like if you did dabble in all that stuff, would you be where you are today? Never know. You never know. I could be better. I doubt it, but I could be. You never know. Your scotch upstairs? Everything upstairs probably. My 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 family uh <laughs> my family like to collect. What time is it? Ten o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Oh, let's, let's, let's spice this up a little bit. With some, we'll go shot for shot, then we'll get in the bib, we'll start rapping. With some Fiji water, we'll do me. Hey, shot this vodka in there. You're gonna remember I, I have some I have some Woolworths water there too for later. Very expensive DJ. <laughs> very, very expensive DJ. Um, Thanks for the Fiji water, by the way. Hey. That's my Woolworths one over there. Sponsored, <laughs> sponsored athletes. Um, uh. But yeah, so that's, so that's when, is that when you started, is that when you got signed by Beauty Music? When when just when did you start working with Keith? Um, that's when he approached me. Like the same day we met is the same day he said, um, like let's set up a, a meeting. So what was that? That was August. No, my my birthday's August. So that was in September, early September, and maybe a month later, October, is when um, uh, is when I had a meeting with Keith. And uh, yeah, and then he pretty much said he's interested in, you know, in taking part in the potential before MV, uh, before your giga mvp have you heard it, had you heard of key yeah so you know his profile picture i just remember that uh, it's still there isn't it you cigar be him the cigar yeah i was like i thought i was like this guy's definitely shook my <laughs> <laughs> you want to laugh i said to i said to him on the, i was on the phone to him before i was on the phone to him before i'm like yeah i'm about to go and say this question blah blah i'm like is there anything you don't want me to ask. He's like, nah, nah, nah. I'm like, Key, you know what I'm like. He's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, so I can't call you Shug Knight. I'm like, I can't sit there and call you. He's like, what's it like? You being you being Dr. Dre and him being Shug Knight. Nah, nah, Dr. Dre, <laughs> hey, hey. Just can't confirm. If fuck came from his mouth, didn't come from my mouth. He's not Shug Knight, but... You know what? He's not. He's um, a wholesome person. Shug Knight is... Yeah, you know what, the, the, the thing, not not because he's involved with me in his podcast, because I'm allowed to speak freely. But the thing that I love about Key is that he 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 wants everyone to win. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I, I I've never seen someone who, for the scene, for the culture, for the, for the Islanders, want to go as hard mm. as 
and want to lead by example. You know what I mean? And and, and anyone like because I, I worked with him. I was with him twelve hours a day, fucking three years. Mm. Um, you know, he's, he's genuine like that. Yeah. And every every idea that anyone comes up with is his idea. So, <laughs> but um, <laughs> how, how's he? What's his guidance been like? Mm. It's like. I'm I'm very happy that he approached me, because I look obviously I look more about him as he approached me, um, and then we obviously got together got together a bit more, and I learnt about him and what he can do for me, and I think I became more grateful as like for what he was doing for me as time went by. Um, you know I don't think I've ever met someone that can harness someone else's potential so much, and you know maximize it, and yeah. I'm just I'm I'm grateful that he like I have someone that's able to do that, and who's doing that for me, you know I I'm already I'm already grateful enough you know my fa- my own family putting in so much effort sometimes even more than me, like for my business, and then for having someone outside of my family, you know do that as well, who's also you know has their head in the game, um, in the in the music game that is, <laughs> but someone like that with um you know he he knows he knows people but he also he's also just good with people as well yeah i think i'm I'm very grateful that he he approached me and was interested in that Mm. i just want to get on the record i actually showed key discretion speaks i'm just i'm just saying (laughs) (laughs) no 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 no, i'm saying um now you've gone from djing you've gone done gigs i had your compass you were like you're pretty much my star. You're my quarterback. You're the, <laughs> you're you're like you were like the. I knew they were full fucking low. Man, get this question on. We're set. Yeah. <laughs> you will get an extra five hundred people in the door. When did you decide you want to go into producing? Because I feel like that's where you're at now. I, I feel like yeah, you got DJing, but producing yeah. is where. Because when when we walked in, you had beats going, and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> fuck, man, this. I was already about to go. Actually, I'm only about to go into the booth and just drop a couple bars. Yeah. But what made you like? When did? You, when were you like? Fuck it. You know what? Let's let's start start being more creative. Because mixes yeah. is you're using other people's material that's already there. Yeah. Yeah. Producing is scratch. You're taking random sounds and random instruments and thing and just putting it together and all of a sudden, bang! You got your first single lifestyle. Huh. So. Explain to me that process. What's that like? Um, I feel like I've always somewhat been producing just behind the scenes and not really, you know, not really doing much with it. I think I was, it was more me learning how to do it. I, was, I already had the programs that I was using for my remixes. I was like, you know, let's let's use this, try to actually make something from scratch. And, you know, I felt like I took, I took a bit of time to learn, you know, um, by myself. And then it wasn't, it, w- it really wasn't until I, um, you know, I connected with Key and where I saw, you know, I was probably able to do something with it. And yeah, I, th- I think that's, I think that's the point where I started getting a bit more serious with it. Um, you know, now I have a whole you know, set up here. Yeah, you, t- you said to me something before in this quarantine, how many beats did you make? How many, be- in, in the last three weeks, how many beats do you reckon you've made? So before quarantine, I was probably making two, two to three a week, and then now I'm making four to five a day. That's work ethic. Consi- considering that they say that like little baby, little Wayne, they drop fuck, they can make. Drake said in his uh, his interview recently that he reckons little Wayne makes four bangers in a night, and there's a nineteen year old making four to five, and I heard the quality of the beats and. I'm no superstar. I think I am, but I'm no superstar. The quality of those beats are global, top tier, four to five in a day. You know, when fuck a lot of people just sitting there doing fuck all with their lives in general, not just producers, just in general. Um, your, I, I want to touch on lifestyle because I actually, the thing that I love, like the thing that I love, and the thing that you know, what people actually don't look in. Stream, streaming as a streaming as a so you got a million views right now on Spotify. I think two million total, or more. The numbers could be higher. I haven't checked lately. Maybe. The the I know you you guys are sitting around two two and a half million total streams. 
in the last oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. four weeks. Mm. Now, considering the last four weeks, we've sort of been in isolation. Now, for that, and people don't really, uh, people who don't know, understand Spotify and streaming, st- streaming's been down by about 20, 30%. Because you've got to remember, when most people listen to music, when we listen to music, we're either listening to it before we go to a club, um, before we go drive, when we're in the car driving, when we're in thing. Now, if we're fucking stuck in the house, we're doing fuck all. We're, not, we're, like, we're doing stuff, but we're not going to be playing music flat sticks. So streaming's down. For you to get a million streams or two million streams in four weeks, I mean, that's a massive achievement. Mm. How's, yeah. that, how's that make you feel? Yeah, um, it's it's good. I I don't compare it to like my remixes and stuff where, you know, I was getting high views as well because I feel like this is a whole new game for me. I feel like the audience is somewhat similar, but it's still, it's a, it's a different approach. Um, you know, it's like similar steps to it, you know, making music, promoting it, putting it out there, listen to it. But because it's a, it's original that I think it's such a different game. I have, this is my first, you know, um, like first project on Spotify. So streaming is so, is so much, um, you know, it's oh sorry, it's so new to me. Um, it was exciting. I felt, I felt the difference between this and releasing remixes as well. It felt much more official. Um, I think the overall experience was exciting. Do you like the creative element of it or do you yeah. like the business element of it as well? Both. I like both. Cause I'm not going to lie. I, I go on, I go on stream, I go on the stream, um, Australian streaming platforms, like all the artists and I add up all the numbers and I'm like, okay, I know that they get, uh, I'm not going to disclose the amounts, but I know that they get this amount for a million views. Fuck, these cunts making cash. Yeah. Man, this place <laughs> making fucking money. <laughs> ah, that, that explains all the new Gucci shoes and fucking <laughs> this and that. So like it, as a, as a, well, you're an artist now. If you, if you think about it, cause even though you're a producer, you're pretty much an artist too. Yeah. I don't see myself as producer. What do you see yourself as? Artist. Yeah. I did see myself as a musician first and then I felt it was a bit, I'm a bit more official than that. You know, I'm in the public eye as well. I feel like I'm an artist. I feel like people get confused though. Do you move different now that you're in the public eye? Or are you still the same old D? I feel, I'm, I'm, I feel the same. I don't feel like, you know, the only difference is I feel like I can't look as scrappy in public. Like I'll wear this and no problem, but I feel like what I used to do is like what I used to wear in public, I can't do it as much anymore. Because people come up for photos every now and then. Yeah, but I, th- I think that I think you gotta, like there's gonna be like a level a l- level of you, man. Like I don't think people. Mm, no, I mean like I mean like scrappy, scrappy. Like we're talking like ghetto, ghetto. Not even ghetto, ghetto. Just ugly, ugly. They don't love you for your personality and your music. Don't get the looks. <laughs> I, I might be a seven out of ten for looks, but I'm an eleven out of ten for personality. <laughs> that's what that's what that matters. Yeah. But nah, yeah, I feel ya. Like, I don't need to look fresh every time we go out. Are you a designer? Are you a, are you a designer, bloke? No. Nah. I'm wearing in-sport trackies right now. I don't care. It's all point. <laughs> you're, not a, you're not a Burberry, Gucci, fucking Givenchy. It's not your thing? When I go to certain places, I'll, I, I feel like I do need to, you know, meet a certain standard. That's different. For my video clip, I, 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 thought, I, was, I thought I was pretty flashed out. Are you, um... Then I realised the... Uh, Hef's Hef's shoes costed more than cost more than my whole outfit. <laughs> Shout out Hef's. But, oh um, my gosh! Your cameraman for that was pretty good too. <laughs> but, <laughs> Shout out my cameraman because that's Shout the cameraman who did lifestyle Sorry. too. You know, what? Shout out lifestyle as a whole and lips too. Yeah, big shout out to everybody. What was it like working? What, what was it like working with them too? It was cool, but you know, I got to. I've known. See, I've known Hef's for a while now. I've known him since maybe 2012, 2013. I've known I've known his brother for a bit as well, because of school. Went to the same school, and he's he's um he's <coughs> he's pretty. <coughs> Three seconds. No, we're not editing that. <laughs> fuck a raw until then. Um. Ke- when Key sees, he's gonna get excited because like fuck, perfect. He dies on the thing. Views go through the roof. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. Um. Yeah, so I've known Hefs for, for for a while. Like I said, 2012, 2013, and we went to the same school. He's pretty close with um, um, my sister and my brother-in-law. So you know, we 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 had a we had somewhat of a an association before we both entered a like 
music scene, you know, legitimately at least. Um, so for, for to have him, it was it was it was cool to do something with someone I already knew. Lips as lips as well. We I feel like we built um, some kind of relationship before we did a track together. You know, I was I was there for when um, I was there before Key met him when Key was showing me that his videos and saying, yeah, like this guy, I, I reckon you know. This guy's the next big thing. That, was that when he was um, Jay Alipo? Yeah. A, um, yeah, yeah. That's... With Pistol Pete and Enzo. Yeah, yeah. So how how cra- how crazy? Actually, now that I think about that, how crazy is that now that they started off as like that was years ago? Because I remember I first heard that song. Twenty eighteen. I remember I first heard that song. I was playing it, and I was like, "Fuck, this this is mad." Yeah. And then now we fast forward it. Where are we? Twenty twenty and. All three of you under the same label. Yeah, that's, that's um, pretty big. Yeah, fuck. That it, do you get excited seeing that you like? Like you said, people coming from where you've come from are grown now, and he's all actually making moves. I mean, Hef's fuck killing it. You killing it. Lips killing it. Pistol Pete and Enzo coming from Resurrection rebuilding and about to kill it as well. Like, yeah, yeah. How's it feel for you? Like knowing that you actually about to blow up with the people you came up with yeah no it's it's a uh, that's exciting i think blowing up in 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 general is exciting and especially doing it with people because I, I i was working with pistol Pete and enzo back in 2016 i think or something like that um so what were you how old were you 16? Whatever, whatever, whatever the year is, 2016. Like you were born in 2000? So you were yeah. 16 working with Pistol Pen and Enzo. So what, what did we what did we do? We um, DJed, I DJed for them at Curse's concert. And then they got off and I was still DJing. So I DJed for them and then for Cursor. Hey, uh, let's put the connections back together now too because Open... Have you worked with Open Too Late? Yeah. Okay, so Open Too Late... And I met Open Too Late around that time too because... Um, Lazy, Lazy J's and J Ting's is an event for the culture. <laughs> Shout out J Ting's. Yeah, they um. That's where I met. That's where I met Lazy J and J Ting's. He's made a resurrection now too. Yeah. Lazy J. Yeah. I love your stuff, man. Um. So around that time is where um. Um. I started. I met Open Too Late. You're allowed. I think he's managed by a bloke that used to work for Key. And I used to work with Royce. Who? who? Royce. No, no, who? Who's managed? Lazy J. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's just it's just funny watching, like, all the people in the scene, just, like, the, the connections, and they come together, and you're like, yeah. fuck, like, I just did this, I did that. And I remember Royce, man, like, he's doing well, too. I, have you heard of Cairo? In, from, um, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he he like he he were he's their manager and like, I remember him being in the office and he was like fucking right, this 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 and they had they had, they had, they had a song and I go nah, 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 nah. and I had a problem right and now to watch him do his thing too it's you know what uh, it's a good feeling seeing people that you've worked with you've sort of come up with and learned with do their thing yeah but um. Mate, so from from like lifestyle and young and lips and producing, you got to have more tracks in the bank. Yeah, hey. I do. You I got, ideas. You got any snippets you want to share with the team? Yeah, got some stuff. Well, let's go. Let's go play. Let's go play. Oh, sweet. Yeah. What have you been working on? Show me what you've been a working lots, on. A lot, a lot. Look at it. Is it wow? That's it's March. That's just March alone. Uh, March and April. Fuck, that's that's gotta be at least. What do you, what genre do you prefer? Do you like drill? Do you like hip hop? I Regga- like reggaeton. A bit of everything. That's what sometimes I like to do a little bit of everything in one song. Sometimes sometimes it's real crazy stuff. What's your creative process like? That's what I want to know. Where, what do you start with? Because I know you put something on TikTok. It's, it's different every time. So, so my TikTok started with. So I have a whole lot of vinyls here. Explain the vinyls, but because you're telling me that they're important to you. Yeah, yeah. So these are my grandparents' vinyls that they gave to me. Wow. Um, and on my TikTok, I've, one of my my latest TikTok, picked one at random. Not this one, but I picked one at random. <laughs> <laughs> picked one at random. Um, I recorded it onto my laptop um, through the turntable I have over there. 
and then yeah, as like I said, I recorded it, brought it onto onto Logic, chopped it up, and I did my thing on it. Yeah, you did. That's for sure. Um, I also have another TikTok where I just took an um an R and B song and then made some some stuff out of that. So this this is one of them. Just want to fall in love. Who would you who would you like to see on this? Create the kid. Yeah. Yeah. I love Creed the Kid, man. He's crazy. And now my tag in here, just for now. There's one that I sampled as well. You got any drill ones? Uh, any, any hardcore? Who do you give me? Look, you got a hip style beat? Let's get like a boom. I we, I made one for hip somewhere. I made like a really different. Where is it? Here it is. Is that the one? Now, how long do you reckon it takes you to make a beat? Do you... Sometimes it's different. Sometimes sometimes it'll take me like two days. Sometimes I'll do it in like. 15 minutes would you lay like is there ones where you like you lay down this and then you come back like, three months later like you'll be you just yeah to something like fuck that sound what's that matter on that one yeah yeah all the time so actually this is this is um this is an example of one of them um i'll just play the one that i've done Nineteen years old, man. Nineteen years old. Nineteen. Can't, I can't get over that. So this one was this one was inspired by Hefs's type of music. Um, I did that. So I did an, another version of this back in twenty seventeen or eighteen, and then I just went and remade it. Just because I like, I still like the idea of it. I just added a lot to it. And were you inspired by Hess Tobes beats back then, or you just you just had it in the bank? In the bank. It was more. Oh, it was more. Um. It was more. I was in the middle of making it when I was like, "Oh, Hess would sound good on it." Then I would kind of cater to to his to rap uh, his rap while I was doing it. Um. So I wouldn't say I started. I wouldn't. I didn't say. You know, this is some, I'll make something that Hefs could could be on. I just went, um, you know, during the middle of it, I decided. You know, I'm gonna hear you with the top three Aussie rappers now. Uh, right now. Who, yeah. Who's your top three? Top three rappers. One change every day. I swear to God. Yeah, no, no, same, same as me. So rap, like, so I'm. Not, rappers. We're rappers. Yeah, so was, I feel like singers is a bit different. Rappers, I can't put them in order, but. I don't have a very, very, oh, I can't even very strategic, can't. very strategic. Where's my man? <sighs> See, that's hard. That's hard. Do you want to hear mine? Yeah, yeah I'll go, go yours first. Yeah. Um, I'll go with Hefs. Yep. You know, you know who I'm loving at the moment? Who? Hooks, man. Yeah, he, he's. I had an uh, an idea to have him on my next one. The, <laughs> the um. You know he used to work in the, he used to work in the office next door to us. I didn't even realize. Yeah, we used to be in the elevator every day together. No way. Yeah, small world, small small world, man. That's crazy. Well, 
Uh, um, We're not going to disclose locations. No, no, at <laughs> the old office. Yeah. Oh, well. Go there. That's like, man, I used to, and then I put it together. I'm like, oh, what the fuck? And then I, then I seen him build on my face. Keep the music up. Hmm. He's, he's, bro, he, he's got, he's, he's, um, verse on fame. Wow. He's got fucking bars. He's yeah. got, he's got bars. Yeah. He's, he's, that was crazy. He's got bars. That was a crazy one. That's two. Who's yeah. that third one? <sighs> Rapper? Chilling it. You want to hear a funny story about Chilling it too? I just mm. catch the bus with him. Is, so is he from like... He's from Hillsville. Oh, okay. So he's from that area. We, I, we used to catch the bus together. I used, to, I used to share his freestyles when he uses this person on, um, on Facebook. That's crazy as well. But a small world. Small... Hey, shout out. Chilling it. I need you on the podcast. I need, I need you on this thing. We're going <laughs> to talk. You know what? I even let you smoke up on it. I can't have it because my mum and that watch it so I can get in trouble. But like, you can do whatever you want. Support the brand. Get in, I'm going to contact you. But um, Marketing at its best. Oh, uh, bro, I'm back on my fucking... I'm back uh, on my bullshit. Don't worry, I'm back on my fucking bullshit. That's what we want, though. That's what we want. Don't be ignoring my questions. Let's go. Three. Three. I, oh, three, <laughs> man. I can't do three because I... I'll right, go five. Okay, we'll go five. Make man. sure you add me in because I'm about to drop the hardest bar that's ever been fucking okay, dropped. Okay, okay. Special mentions to AJ. No, I, I need a mad name. Little puppy. There's probably someone out there with that name already. Tell them to come for it. It's coming. Kind of Rap music's the, all about being. The main baby. name. <laughs> Rap domain. Um, no order. Oh, individuals, eh? Oh my god. Listen, like you said, you're in a you're you're in a neutral spot. You can talk about anyone. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I put JMs on there too. No, no, I, no. That's that's so my three that I had, but then I thought of more as well. Like, so mine was um, Hef's JMs, HP on it, Elijah. Yo. See, I lo- I love Elijah, Yo, but not when he's got an American accent. But he doesn't have an American accent yeah, anymore. Well, yeah, anymore. That's what I'm saying. But, but, that, but everyone everyone started like that. His last song, his last song, three D. I swear to God, what a song. What a fucking... I used to sit it's there... It's a crazy song. I used to sit there, connected to my speakers when he, he just had the snippet. And I used to play it. Yeah. And then he released it and I'm like, oh my God. It's about fucking time. Everybody started with that accent, like, like with some accent. Not everybody, but most of them did. I just think, like you said, when you're yourself and when you're not trying, you create the best. Yeah. And that's he, man, he's, just, he goes, he's got to stick to drill. He, he reminds me of Dave a lot. Yeah, he, like poetic, very poetic. Yeah, lyricist wise, he reminds me of Dave. Yeah, and I know, I know what you mean, but I can't think. of Okay, he's stop. Let, let's leave him in there because he's gonna. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> you, you're gonna have to give me ten. My, my phone's. I don't Let know why. Say ten. Telepathically, keys already calling me. Man, fuck! I told you not have questions. Um, I got like ten names. I can say. Oh. You know what? I want to know as well. What do you find are your strengths, and what do you find are your weaknesses? My strengths. My strength is my weakness. I overthink. Yeah. That's it. How do you counteract that? Don't overthink. I feel like I need remind. Uh, not. I don't need reminders from people, but I feel like. You know how fucking good you are. <laughs> you fucking got to use. Strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. Overthinking. Yeah. How, how do you counter? Like, overthinking. Obviously, you overthink because you're like f- you're. Positive wanna, wise, explain yeah. to me why you think it's positive. Why it's a strength. Um, I think it's a strength because it overthinking gives me more ideas. It it, it um it allows me to, you know, come up come up with other solutions, um, to whatever that whatever the problem is. But then, sometimes I overthink when I don't need to overthink. When it's so simple, I overthink as well. Um, I think you know. Um, trying to come around that, get over it. I feel like I don't. I feel like it somehow turns into a strength at at some point. Um, like I feel stuck whenever I am overthinking, but then, like I said, I then I then come up with other solutions to it, and that's I think that's where it, that's where it all ties in. What I wanted to touch on you as well. What are, what are your thoughts on an artist? Dropping projects because I, I personally think I personally think artists don't drop enough. See, so like shout out to um the HP boys who they they just dropped their project. Um, but I personally think artists don't drop enough. I mean, if you go look at little baby got out of jail three years ago, he's dropped nine projects. 
unincluding features, unincluding singles. You got the baby, one year. Oh, sorry, two years, three projects, four projects, S- singles, smash, smash. Uh, my mm. personal thing is, if you want to stay consistent, if you want to stay relevant, just drop, drop, drop. Yeah. And because then what happens is that that the the streams actually create the cash flow for them to get better beats, more recognition, bigger features. You mm. know, it's it's a, it's about time that it's sure, you know, one four got ASAP Fur. Yeah. Problem is as well, but this, this is what people don't realise. And we go back to the violence and the beef and stuff. Yeah. Half those boys can't travel overseas. Yeah. To, to America, to UK, to tour. So, like, what's your advice to, to young artists coming up that's involved in the thing? Because you're a neutral character. You're Switzerland. Yeah. What's your advice? Because I personally think, don't get involved. Like, bro, be about it, but... Also, don't get caught because yeah, yeah. they don't they don't realize that getting caught can actually stop the money in the long run. Yeah, exactly. Touring's where the money's at. Yeah. Um. You know. What whatever it does take to get out of it, because I can't I can't speak from any experience in you know in getting out of that out of that scene because I've I was never in it in the first place. But whatever whatever young artists think, um, you know whatever they think it takes to to get out of it. It's probably best to go that way. Um, it, you know, it's not to say that you can't associate yourself with certain people. It's more, no, no. you know, sometimes that it is that. Sometimes it is that you, you can't associate with certain people, but it's it's more it's more being a, like actually being um, deep into that um, into that into that life. Um, so then again, that life he's a he's the gift and the curse. That life is what gives the creativity for the music. Yeah, but it's like, what is your purpose for doing music? Is it that life? Is it is it to spread your message to the other side, or is it to just is it because you want to do it to create music? Yeah, but like so you, you have like I I know that there are you know there are artists coming out now that aren't doing it for music. They're doing it so they can be heard by the other side. That's it. I don't realize that. You you remember something? This is what you gonna remember. You talk about it a lot. You, you know what your biggest cheat code in life is. Mm. You got a cheat code. You got you got you got a big cheat code. Parents, mm. your your parents having good parents is a cheat code. Yeah. Because what ha- what's happened is is put you, and I'm not saying anything about anyone else's thing, but your parents have put you on that righteous right path where you know, music for you. It's not about money. It's not about recognition. Sort mm. of thing. You just do it for like you just want to make music, man. You just you're. This is my opinion, like you could be different, but from what I see with you, and I've known you for two years now, like you're just mm. about the music. You mm. just want to, you don't care about nothing else other than making beats. <laughs> and like that's like, man, that's where I think, I think, you know what, the, the artists now who are getting recognition for it's about the other side, about the other side, about the other side, I feel like the ones that have progressed from that and are continually dropping, 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 have more moved towards the creativity side. The, yeah, yeah. The money side. Yeah. You know, it's not a little money in it. Um, but, man. Fuck, this Aussie music thing is crazy. It is crazy. It's complicated and it's... It's it politics. It's, it's, it's politics, it's man. The people got to study. You got to you gotta study. Yeah. You know, ma- actually, I'll get Massey on the podcast. Um, I need Massey. Marcy needs to come on because me and him got to talk strategy. We got to talk life, man. He, he he talks about it when he when he was locked up. He was reading about Forty Eight Laws of Power by Robert Greene. Yeah. He was reading The Fiftieth Law by Robert Greene. Mar- Marcy's very switched on mm. from his uh, man. I need him on. Uh, Marcy, contact Key or something. Like, let's talk, man. Mm. Um, but it's right, man. It's pol- you're right. It's politics. Yeah. It's a lot of them are just doing it to take shots at, at the other side. Yeah. What are your what are your thoughts on that? Actually, Switzerland. Switzerland. Back to Switzerland. Eh? Shock. No comment. Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. No. I understand that too. You know, um, that speaking to you know the other side or whatever is does spark creativity. Um, but I feel like, like how you said that's that's how they came out of it. Like they they did it, you know, to send their message across. I feel like those ones that did that and have made it still did it for the music in some sense it wasn't just about you know 
that was just their way of telling their story as well and taking shots of the other side. Um, but they were still, like, they still had music in them. And that's what, that I feel like that was actually their main purpose. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of I've seen a lot more artists flop than I have seen make it out, and I feel like that's a reason for it. So have I. Yeah. Because again, it's not cons- they're not consistent. Yeah. You know, I think everything in life, like with you, everything in life is progression. The the first couple podcasts are going to be fucking rough, unedited. Yes. Yeah. I think all of them are going to be rough, unedited because of my mouth. But <laughs> look, everything everything in life, no one like was, no one started at the top of the tier. You know, mm. and you're right. There a lot, there's a lot of Australian artists that fucking fall off straight away. Yeah. They drop one, two, one track, fall off, get locked up, yeah. get this, get that. Consistency, man. And that's where it goes back to just drop, drop. Yeah. Just sit in the studio. This, this cunt's just living. This, this is my show. This cunt's that just live in the studio. Yeah. You know, you, look at you. Five beats a day. Mm. There's people that just, it's just consistency and hard work, man. What would mm. you tell them? What would you, what would you tell the young ones now? The young 15, 16, 17 year old that are sitting on Instagram. Yeah. They're fucking leaving negative comments. They're doing fuck all with their life. I mean, 16, 17, look, you just, you see them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Beef here, beef there. Yeah, lad. You're going to get dipped. You're going to this. Bro. What would you say to them? Coming from a good influence, because people look up to you. I look, yeah. you're younger than me, and I look up to you. Mm. Like, what would you say to the young ones that are like, fuck? It doesn't have to be music. Well, look, what was your bit of advice be to them? What's the... Which ones? The ones that are hating on everything? Or Fuck the them. One? Get a better, get, do something with your life. Don't, the don't ones you. that are trying to make it up? I'll be the vocal one. Fuck them. The ones that are trying to make them up. You know, I've, I've actually said this to a few, uh, to a few young ones, you know, um, those trying to be artists and producers. Um, you know, you, you keep keep working on it until you know you're ready, not till you, you think you're ready. You know, there are, there are producers that do two, you know, two beats and then they think they're ready to give it to an artist. That's great confidence, but at the same time, you, you know, confidence doesn't always get you everywhere. Sometimes it, it needs a good combination of confidence and, you know, you need a good sense of reality too. If you if you if you're confident enough and then you know, people are telling you that it's not like your stuff isn't good enough. Your confidence goes down, and then you have nothing. You know, if if you have that sense of reality, you know, you, you're you probably have that ability to pick yourself up and keep working at it. And I feel like that's what people see. You know, they take a look at my age. They think of my age, and they say, like he's he's at a certain spot, like he's at a position now, but he's so young. But they forget that I've been doing it since I was nine. So they forget that that's 10 years of working. Have you heard of the 10,000 hour rule? I'll send it to you. 10,000 hour rule, I forgot who it's by. But the 10,000 hour rule is essentially anyone who works on their craft for 10,000 hours is classified guru. Hmm. Or cl- classified, uh, I don't know if it's a guru or, an, sorry, an ex- they're classified an expert in their field. Hmm. You, if, we, if we put all your hours for the last 10 years, You've accumulated them 10,000 hours. Mm. And you're only 19. Yeah. But you are the sole example of what, you know, yeah. you should, like, they should be like. Because you're right. You you, you can't you can't believe your own hype. You just got to, you got to trust your work. Yeah. And send out testers. Yeah, exactly. Testers are the best thing. What's your creative process like? How long will it take if we put bars? How long will it take? Not long. For you to make a song? Not long. Let's do it. You want to do Sweet. it? Let me just test that everything's connected. Okay. Hey. Yeah. yeah. Mm. 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 Was I supposed to sing a? Hey? Yeah. Fuck. They run it back. <laughs> Ready? Yeah, let's go. Do you want to hear it? Yeah, let's go. Remember, you first, make you 
Real quick, I took you to Bora Bora To see the thing of ours, cost a nostra You a masterpiece, stop acting like a club poster Oh, you look a little poser You know I like it when you stick your nose up Woo! You know what I mean? <laughs> huh? Hey, discretion Yo, what's up? I think we got another one You got another bar? <laughs> no, I think we got another hit Hey, you need to, you, you need to hear something you need it, you need it, you need to keep something. Told you I love you, but I gotta go back to work. You know I gotta make it a right thing in a hearse. I was with Julia every night, you thought I was chasing skirts. Have to learn to put you first and make you hurt. Baby, know your worth, know your truth, make your mark on this earth. How would you feel if I took you to Bora Bora? This little thing of ours got some notion. You a masterpiece, stop taking like a club poster. Oh, you look a little poser? You know I like it when you stick your nose up. Look, I don't want to be disrespectful, but I expect a $2 million advance. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded sick, bro. <laughs> hey, can you wake up, Lips? I want him on the hook. Uh, I woke him up, bro. He woke up at 6pm. Sure. I know we already asked three times, but... Finishing up, where do you see yourself in five years? What festivals you want to play at? Where do you see yourself? It's too big, I can't even think about it. Everywhere. I want to be everywhere. I want to be flying. Once this coronavirus thing is done, I want to be flying everywhere. Everywhere. Overseas. I want to be in, I want to be in the faces of everybody in the UK. Everybody in America. But let's get Australia done first too. I want to be everywhere. Now we're gonna revisit you in six months, and we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this on a private jet. Because I say, if, if we're gonna do it, we're gonna do, do it big. big. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna leave it at that. Exactly. My Very man, big. as always. Thank you. Thanks, Abby, man. No, you're welcome. I'll see you in six months. <laughs> Let's fucking finish this track. Let's go. Let's finish this track. Let's go. Let's finish this track. Woo! Oh my god.